We're going to have a look at the Favorsky reaction, um, which in this particular case is going to lead to a ring contraction. Um, but really, the Favorsky reaction is a rearrangement of a cyclopropanone intermediate. And I'll show, and it doesn't necessarily have to lead to a ring contraction, as in this case, it's just because this is a six membered ring, it will do. Um, so let's get started with the Favorsky reaction. First thing to note is um, we're going to add a base to a ketone and if you've done all the uh, ketoenol tautomerism uh, mechanisms you'll know that this is in equilibrium so you added your base all minus so this is some alkoxide base and that'll take a proton off either here draw the protons on There's another one there, or here. Okay. Obviously, these two have got different pKa values, but you'll get an equilibrium between the two. I'm just going to take this one off for now because this is going to help with the mechanism. Uh, but I could equally have took that off, and then it'll it'll go through all its different intermediates, um, uh, well-end intermediates, if you will, that exist. But it's only this one that's going to actually react. So if we Right as a eprotonated form, right there on that carbon. And just add that bromine in there, back in there. And that's just a resonance form of the enolate or minus. Now when it comes to the the next step, we, we have to make a cyclopropanol. So if we attack there, like that, kick that out, that's pretty straightforward. It's like an internal uh, nucleophilic substitution reaction. Or if you're in this um, resonance form, you can see that it'll come from there and then attack there. And kick out bromine. It's exactly the same thing. It's always going on. The electron density is whirling around. It's oxygen, carbon, carbon here. So it doesn't really matter which form you have. Uh, so long as you you produce this cyclopropanol. So once this happens, it goes to this compound. So that's a five gram doing across there. Oops, that should be joined up there, sorry. There's your cyclopropanone intermediate. And what I'll do, I'll just label these up just to make it easier to see what's going on in the final product. That's, there's your six carbons. They're still there if you look in this structure. Four, five, six. And I'll label them up here as well. That's still that one. This is now two, oops, three, four, five, six. You can see that one's broke away from that one. So what happens now to get from here to here is this alkoxide, R or minus, comes in, attacks a carbonyl to form an intermediate, which then quickly decomposes, if you will. Oh, are there? And this is a clever bit, I suppose. So this then comes in. Now it can kick that out again. But I gave you starch material, so there's an equilibrium there. But what actually happens is it then goes off like that and picks up. You choose your solvent to match your alkoxide. Just draw a line between that proton and the oxygen, and then you'll get your base returning. That'll pick a proton up. 
and that will be your product from that reaction. Yeah, so the double bonds formed again in the one position. This has broke off and picked up a proton. So if I put that proton in blue, there's a new proton. So that's this one here. I just draw a circle around it. So blue is probably not the best colour to choose because it looks a bit like black on this one, but you get the idea. Let's see if yellow will show up. No, that's even worse. Okay, I'll give up on those colours. This one. Pink. Pink. So that's that part on there. And that is the Favolsky reaction. You can let's just quickly do same mechanism. This time we won't use a um, we won't use a six membered ring. We'll we'll just have a look at uh, a normal uh, ketone, a linear ketone. I think all ketones are normal really. Uh, let's put that there, bromine there. Okay, so RO minus RO minus is gonna come in. I just draw that in red. It's gonna come in here, pick that up, that's then gonna form the enolate like that. So you get the enolate formed or minus bromine. That then comes back in there like that. Form the cyclopropon propanon. Alright, I've, I've made this symmetrical. Not on purpose. Just put that on there like that. Obviously when this opens up in the next step, um, there's gonna be some selectivity depending on how you you know, this could be chiral, it could you could have some chiral Lewis acid there or something coordinating. Something to to basically induce some chirality or chemoselectivity of how it actually attacks here. But we won't won't worry ourselves too much about that for now. So that goes up. And if seen my other tutorials, these double headed arrows here just uh, represented going from the tetra the intermediate, then it collapses back down. And that will break that up. That'll pick up the proton. H in basic conditions. So let's keep the charges right. So the proton in this case comes from the solvent. And that. I'll just make us a bit more room so we can see that. That will then give you a product which looks like this. I'll prime there and I'll just label them up again because it is a bit tricky. There's one, two, three, four. And that is one, two, three, four. So as as you can see, it's it's basically if we take it back to the beginning here, one, two, three, four. It's actually connected two to four. So it's, it's a lovely way of. First of all, it's a lovely way of making an acid from a ketone. Uh, sorry carboxylic acid or an ester from a ketone and it's also a good way of of moving um, two carbons closer together in this case if you needed to do that so imagine you coupled this together but then you wanted these two coupling together later on and that's a good way of doing that too so that is the Favolsky reaction